Did you know that Phoenix just released the Stingray 2 this summer? Neither did I! Keep watching as I reveal the new features, compare its par rating with the original Stingray, and share what I really think of it. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven tips to help fish enthusiasts like you. And if you watched my frogbit care video, you'll know that I was getting yellow dying frogbit in my shrimp tank, and I suspect it's from the shoddy aquarium kit light I'm using. So I went to order the Phoenix Stingray LED light, which is a great low-tech planted light that I use on all my other aquariums. But wait, what's this? New model available? I scoured the internet for information on the Stingray 2 and found nothing. The earliest review seems to be from late June 2019, so maybe they just released it two months ago? You know what that means. Time to do my own review. So yeah, this is not a sponsored video at all. I used my own money to get it off Amazon, but I wanted to give a huge thanks to my supporters on Patreon for helping to fund this light review. You guys are the best! If you want to join Team AGW, check out the link below in the description. All right, two days later and we have our light. The Phoenix website doesn't have a lot of information, so I had to grab it off the box. First thing I immediately noticed is the new light is a silver covered aluminum, not black like the original version. Seems pretty sturdy to me. I looked up the company and it says that Phoenix is headquartered in Illinois and the light itself was manufactured in Taiwan. For dimensions, I'm getting it for a 10 gallon tank. So this is the 20 inch long version, 2.3 inches wide and 0.9 inches tall. Uh, it actually says razor thin profile. So the light itself, just the LED section is 0.23 inches tall. Seems slightly thinner than the original. It takes 16.5 watts to run it compared to the original Stingray was only 11 watts but that kind of makes sense because it looks like it has double the amount of LED bulbs. We've got 44 white LEDs, which are 7,000 Kelvin daylight LEDs, eight of the red ones, which are 620 nanometers, and eight blue ones at 460 nanometers. Unlike the original light, there's a dual switch. So if you click it to the right, it's on max mode where all the lights are on. In the middle, the light is off. And then if you click it to the left, it's moonlight mode where only the blue lights are on. No, there isn't a phone app where you can customize everything, but you can use it with a traditional power outlet timer, which is all I care about. The Stingray 2 does boast a 120 degree beam angle, which is really cool because that means the light will spread around more in the tank and won't just shine on the plants directly below it. We've got these clear plastic legs for mounting on a rimless or framed tank. So while it's not metal, the plastic seems pretty thick and stable, and it has adjustable length to fit to your aquarium. This light is not waterproof, so an aquarium lid is strongly suggested, but it does have a moisture resistant splash guard, LED coating, and power switch. A major con is that it only has a six month warranty, but that's always been true for Phoenix since they're more of a budget friendly option. And then we've got this fancy ETL listed seal, which basically means it's UL rated and hopefully won't burn down your house. Yay! In summary, the main differences that I can see between the Stingray 2 and original Stingray is that, well, it's silver instead of black, maybe a tiny bit thinner, has almost double the LEDs with three rows of lights instead of one, so there's more light spread, but it does take more wattage to run. We've got our new moonlight mode, which I'll never use. <laughs> and then there's a $10 price increase. So the original is $43, the Stingray 2 is $53 right now on amazon.com. All right, that's all the information we can get from the box, website, and my initial impressions. Let's get to the PAR rating. PAR stands for Photosynthetic Active Radiation, and it basically just measures the amount of light radiation that plants can see in order to photosynthesize. The measurement unit is micromoles per meter squared per second, which I'm just gonna shorten to micromoles from now on because that's a mouthful. According to a forum post from George Farmer, who's a famous aquascaper in the UK, 15 to 30 micromoles is considered low light, 30 to 50 micromoles is medium light, and then more than 50 is high light. I'm fortunate enough that my local fish club has a par meter you can rent because this sucker costs $550 if you want your own. All you have to do is stick the sensor in the middle of the tank facing up and then turn it on to read the measurement. Super easy. 
So for my experiment in a 10 gallon tank, the sensor is approximately 11 to 12 inches from the light, which I just laid across flat on a 3 16 inch glass lid. So yes, I am measuring the light intensity through the water and glass panel because I didn't want to damage the non-waterproof stingrays. I also turned off all the surrounding lights and closed the blinds, but there was some ambient lighting going on that maybe contributed a micromole or two. I'm going to be measuring my default aquarium kit light from Aquion, the original Stingray, and then the Stingray 2. The water surface was initially covered in frog bit, so just for kicks, I decided to measure it first with all the floating plants in the way. First up, we've got our kit light with frog bit covering everything, and it's registering 9 to 10 micromoles of par. Hmm, that's probably why I'm having a hard time growing plants. Next up is the original Stingray with frog bit covering everything, and it is 12 to 13 micromoles. And then finally, the Stingray 2 with frog bit is 22 micromoles. Okay, okay, not a bad start. Now you know why your plants really suffer if you let floating plants get out of control. So let's clear out all this frog pit and do the readings again, for real. Round 2, kit light without frog bit, is still 9 to 10 micromoles. Huh, that didn't really change at all. Then the original stingray without frog bit is 32 to 33 micromoles. Okay, now we're talking. That's an increase of 20 micromoles, and now we're getting decent ratings for a low light tank. Then drum roll please for the Stingray 2 without frog bit. An astounding 61 to 62 micromoles. Holy cow, that's a jump of 40 micromoles and is definitely a decent amount for growing medium light plants and maybe even some highlight ones. Here's a comparison of what the tank looks like with the original Stingray versus Stingray 2. It's kind of hard to tell the actual color and brightness on camera because I'm sure my smartphone is auto-correcting everything, but I tried. Now, the whole reason I bought this new light is because I thought the frog bit was turning yellow from lack of light. Ha! Turns out I was wrong. I put in all new healthy frog bit that was harvested from my betta fish tank, which uses, by the way, the original Stingray clip-on light. And then two weeks later, they're yellow again. So at this point, I think it may be a nutrient problem, so I'm gonna try increasing the fertilizer dosing and see if it helps. Is it worth it? Yes? I mean, it totally depends on your budget and goals for your aquariums. On a scale of good, better, best, I'd say good is a DIY solution or off-brand light where you're really gonna get the cheapest cost, but maybe not as much quality and reliability in the long run. Whereas best would be a lot more expensive, like a Fluval or Kessel light with all the bells and whistles and fully customizable phone app. Me, I'm a middle of the road kind of girl, so Phoenix suits me just fine. I think the Stingray 2 is a fantastic option for low to medium light tanks, whereas the original Stingray is probably only good for low light plants. I mean, I still use the original Stingray on my Shy Guys Aquarium, and with all the plants I'm growing, I feel like it could use a little more juice. So I'd say if you're looking for a new light and can save up for it, the Stingray 2 is a fairly cost-effective product for someone who wants to get a little more serious about their planted aquariums. Kind of like me. If you want to hear the five things I wish I'd known about planted take lighting, check it out over here and subscribe so you won't miss next week's video, which will be a quick and dirty tutorial on betta fish. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>